It's bonus time. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. And I hope your 2019 has started off great. I've had a great time producing the videos I've posted and I'm looking forward to an even better experience in 2019. So as always, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, hit the bell notification, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment. Do it! Just do it! Just do it! I use lots of water here to really seat the putty into the joint. I also like to even things out a little bit before I start the beating process. If you're interested to see how I textured this base before the primer went on, check out the video in the upper left corner of your screen. I'm using a wooden cuticle pusher here for the tool to make the bead. I find a blunt round object the best tool for making the beads look correct. I'm working at roughly a 30 degree angle while pushing and pulling the putty and trying to keep a consistent beaded surface. and the completed weld bead. The hairspray was applied off camera for this segment. The size of the chips are determined by how much hairspray you add and how thick or thin the paint is that you apply over the hairspray. Always use water to thin the paint. If you use a solvent based thinner, you'll have a much harder time removing the paint. Uh, of course, you're using water to remove the paint, so that will activate the hairspray and make it much easier for you to achieve decent chips. I've applied the base coat quite heavy over the hairspray. This is why I've had to saturate the areas so heavily. It will eventually make it through to the hairspray. You just have to really work at it, which, you know, can work to your favor and you can end up with some really nice chipping and some subtle chipping as well. When I'm using the fiberglass pen, it's a twisting, poking motion I'm using to gain those very, very fine chipped areas.
Mapping is a technique where you're adding paint back to the surface and then creating textures and patterns to make the surface more interesting to look at. It also helps soften or blend areas that may have been too harsh. I call that bull talk for a one-eyed fat man. I add multiple layers of mapping to areas that I find are still a little too bold. You also want to try to avoid uniformity. Try to keep the areas looking random and asymmetrical. I always add a drop or two of flow improver to my acrylic paint. It just helps the paint uh, stick better to the oils that you previously applied. At this point I'm trying to add a little more depth to the chips and a little more definition. You can see here how the mapping has toned down those areas and this is what I was trying to achieve.
When I'm weathering, I find a need for adding and subtracting paint. As you're working, you'll find you need to go back and readjust things until the tones and textures look just right. The following colors are the colors I most often use when adding rust tones to my weathering. A filter is just a heavily thin paint which is used to alter your base coat from a cooler to a warmer tone or a warmer tone to a cooler tone. Here I'm using acrylic colors to again alter the chips and just accentuate them a little more and give them a little more interest. As you can see the chips have altered quite a bit since from where I've started and I know I can always go back and fix things and not have to worry about that things are all messed up. So using all these techniques gives me peace of mind knowing that I can fix things if I do mess up. Now that I have the definition with the acrylics and I've shaped the chips the way I want them to be, I go in and add the oils using various tones of oils to replicate and give me that rusty texture and tone that I'm looking for. When creating rust streaks, you want to add your paint to the top of the rusted area. 
I usually add just a sort of a dab and then just with a slightly moistened brush I'll pull that dab of paint from top to bottom and keep working it until I find the rust streak looks natural and of course having good reference is your best bet on something like this just take photographs or observe rusted areas or on, on different vehicles or buildings or whatever and you'll get a good idea of the way things should look and just try to replicate that as best you can again these techniques are very similar to what I've just shown you so I will just speed through this section a little quicker Now that I have the insignias painted on the sides of the base, I want to blend those in and make them look like they're part of what I've just done. Make sure you're altering your colors and changing the rust tones from yellows to reds to oranges. Yeah, it just gives a lot of variety and makes things more interesting. Once again, just remember to make things look random. Don't use a uniformity when you're adding rust streaks and uh, textures. Try to make it look as natural as you can. Remember uh, that rust pools at the bottom of a rust streak. So have random areas of pooled rust below where you're pulling the rust from the top. And again, keep this as random and as natural looking as possible as well. When creating spattering or splashes, remember to test it before you put it onto the model on a piece of white card or just some towel, just so you know what the pattern is going to look like before you actually put it on the model.
final step is to add some lights back into those dark areas and just make things pop out a little more. Well, that'll pretty much do it for this episode. I hope it was informative and maybe you learned a thing or two. And as always, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification. Give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think by leaving a comment. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.